Welcome to Intriguing Music, sharing your sounds. My name is Elias Lukinen, aka Lukinen, and today we have a specific guest here at Intriguing Music. Occasionally here at Intrigue Music, we have opportunities to interview skilled composers and artists and Canadian composer Milana Tilnik is definitely one of them. Welcome Milana Tilnik to this interview. Hi, thank you for welcoming me. It's an honor having you here at Intrigue Music. So Milana, uh, for people who might not know you, could you introduce yourself? I'm a musician. I'm a pianist composer, singer, songwriter, and from time to time I'm a session artist, so I record music as well. It could be your music, you never know. Oh, but, I see, uh, I see. Yeah, I, I do music all, all the time and I also teach. All right, all right. What kind of, you know, focus you have when you create music and uh, what kind of music do you like creating? I, I guess uh, since my our project started about six years ago. Me and my husband were always always together in making music, not in teaching, but in making music. So um, and he's a guy who has very versatile taste, and me too. We like anything from rock to jazz to classical to soundtracks, especially. I guess I'm mostly attracted to writing down some soundtracks, and it could be for a short commercial or for a long movie. I don't mind. I like building a story behind the music with my husband so we discuss random ideas and we discuss the structure and then we get down to actually trying things and that's my favorite part where we just do sketches I we see. throw ideas out and then we combine them somehow and then well he starts to bug me with polishing that's the part that is always a bit Difficult for me. The editing, so, 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 the final. Uh, well, well, may I may I interrupt a bit? Uh, the thing yeah, is that like sure, the, yeah. the people who might uh, be watching this might not know your husband. Could you tell about that? You know your collaboration between him and you. I would like to invite him to tell about himself. Oh, that but would be lovely. He doesn't <laughs> want to. Do you want to? Uh, of well, course, of course. Cool for the camera, but I can. I can try. Oh, you can sit there. Oh, okay. You want to sit on my lap? No, I will find my way. In short, he's not a musician, but he has a really good taste in music and really good ears. Hello. Hello, hello, Artie. Oh, Welcome sorry. to this interview as well. We have a double interview. Oh, quite, quite extraordinary. <laughs> Could you introduce yourself uh, to the people who are watching? Uh, well, uh, my name is Artie, which comes from Artyom. Uh, well, it's not the exactly, hunting goddess. Uh, yes, it's not exactly a Russian name. It's a uh, Greek. Greek name originally. So yes, are you, uh, from, are you from Are you from Russia? Uh, the, yeah. You know, yeah. All right. All right. All right. Let's see. Sorry. Born but not raised. Uh, oh, so right. I was born in Russia, lived there for three years, uh, and then uh, my family moved to Ukraine, then they moved to Belarus, uh, then we moved to Israel, and this is where we met. Uh, and ten years ago, almost ten years ago, we moved to Canada. So that's Gosh, me. Yes, it will be ten yeah, years. Yeah, because so oh, that's quite a celebration yeah. topic. I, I was born in a family of musicians. My grandma and my father and my aunt, and um, so our jumps family is also family of long line of artists, different artists. But I was raised in, in an atmosphere that music is uh, essential. It's like more important than bread. We could sometimes not have enough money to eat, but we would still go to concerts. And uh, for sure, my dad is a musician, biggest inspiration for me. So my father took me to his concerts or to different concerts with different people. And he taught me that music is uh, alive. It needs to be made every day. And you, like in jazz, you need to be able to compose on spot, to play by ear, to sing, to inspire people. It's some music to me was always the biggest magic. And so I grew up studying music seriously uh, with classical approach. And my dad was pushing me into more like having fun and, and um, improvising. I never knew professional jazz until recent five years maybe but I kind of played jazz by ear and I really enjoy that so I finished my musical school just a regular classical path 
But then I um, I moved from one country to another. I moved from Ukraine to Israel, and we struggled with money. I couldn't possibly have the money to continue studying, so I just started performing and teaching already. So I had a few oh, students, cool. and I had a few bands, different bands that I was performing in, sometimes rock, sometimes jazz, sometimes singing, and from time to time classical. So I kept doing that in small venues, never, nothing big, but everything was kind of paid jobs. So I was semi, semi-professional, I guess. It was really cool because I started doing that when I was 13. Really? So I was, uh, yeah. you, uh, what kind of students did you, uh, you know, teach? The, the first students were actually higher levels than me, really? but they did, yeah. But they needed somebody to tell them from different perspectives of what, what was why is their music not accepted? Why is, is their playing not accepted on stages or in contests? So I was actually teaching them musicality, not the technique and not the theory, just musicality because their ears were kind of clogged. Sometimes it happens with oh, classical okay. musicians. When you, you train and you, you know maybe you know that when you practice a lot, but you still don't hear yourself. So you always need somebody else to tell you from the side, like here, relax, here, uh, change your posture, you know, something happens when you change your posture, when you play the piano, when you get closer to the keyboard or far. And some people just don't know that they were taught to sit straight and not move. So the thing you were, you were teaching and how that went from meeting Artyom in the, and starting your own composition, of course. When I met Arty, I was uh, mostly switching to general teaching young children, just uh, including, you know, like first two grades of school or kindergarten. So I was doing everything that a primer, um, primer educational, yep. early childhood education uh, teacher would do. So I was switching gradually from only music to everything around teaching in general. And I was kind of losing my way. I was performing at night, but it was not the same. I was getting tired of underpaid sessions, and that was a bit frustrating for me at this point. I didn't know where to turn to. So when I met Artie, he was like so... Um, he took my singing so seriously, he dragged me to some stages with his parents because his parents were, his mom his is mostly a oh. performer. Yes, his mom is a songwriter and a lyricist and a poet, and she's such a... You have a whole uh, family of music creators, oh my. That's right, yeah. So they kind of, when we met, it was a natural match for me to be saying I'm home again because those people keep creating projects and music and whatever yet after we got I, married and uh, got the first kid and then the second kid well, you know the, the children i i'm a woman so of naturally course, of course. When, I, 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 would, I would like to uh, come back to that uh, later but what i like you you yeah. just mentioned a very interesting fact and i think many artists and composers struggle with this fact getting underpaid jobs and overall the many artists can't live that's just a fact they can't live by making their music so so was teaching and perform like um, was teaching uh, for you a kind of a way for gaining um, uh, income from the music, or was that the main? Of course. And what I did is, uh, as a teenager, when I was teaching, I was putting some money aside. Of course, I had to bring back money to my parents because they needed it too. But whatever I could put aside, I didn't buy clothes, I didn't buy jewelry. I bought records. I, I listened to them got inspired back again to teach more, to save up some money, to buy more music, which is exactly what we do right now. <laughs> We're way, you know? Yes, on a different level. It hasn't, yes, changed. Right. That hasn't changed. We can put any vacation, any rest aside. As soon as we see or hear some performances, we just need to buy tickets or support other artists. We donate a lot. and Yeah, but uh, our children think we're crazy, probably. <laughs> So, you like uh, <laughs> this kind of attitude from the younger part of your life has uh, kept from to, to, to this day. But but the, the thing is, um, how did uh, the, the the you had the struggling position? You know, just uh, uh, doing composition on the side and then uh, start, uh, you know teaching people. But how did it go forward? 
and uh, you know when meeting Artyom and uh, deciding to later on move to Canada where you are currently yes. right now? It went backwards first because we were in love and we wanted children right away and we got children right away so I was thinking to myself, um, I turned down a few jobs of performing because I was pregnant or breastfeeding or just tired. So I stayed home with children, I homeschooled them, and I brought music into their lives. My daughter and my son, they're both very musical. So I thought that was what, what is needed to do, and I didn't even dream of bigger things. I completely forgot. I, I played every day. I sang every day. Every when this was? When, 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 what's the time frame? When, when was this that uh, you had to turn this offers down? That, that was 10 years ago. It's been a bit like after 2003, uh, uh, 2000. 13 years ago, sorry. When yeah. my daughter was born, I turned down a few things. And I, I'm not sorry because I had to be a full time mom and I preferred homeschooling to any kindergartens. Really? Because so I have one, yeah, I homeschooled both of my kids until age of five. Right. And I'm really, sometimes I'm even a, a bit sorry that I didn't do it for a longer time, but I just couldn't. I needed to be myself again, so. Of course, uh, that must take a lot of time. Like, uh, what kind of homeschooling it was? It's it's a it's a very different uh, kind of environment for me, Finns, and also uh, in other parts of the country. Could you explain about that, perhaps? Yes, I. Um, since we were at that time, we were living in Israel, and everything was in, in Israel. It was very stressed with uh, everybody was pushing me. Come on, give your children to the daycare. Why are you sitting at home? Why not giving yourself a chance to be a, you know, it's very feminine, for feminists. Um, what do you mean? Approach, but there's also the second oh. approach, very contrasting in Israel. Some women are just completely giving themselves to children. So homeschooling is like the opposite, and I like that idea more. I, I had, uh, I since I studied education anyway, I was pretty good in psychology and development of children and I, I took, I always preferred Waldorf approach where you would give a child a lot of natural um, adventures, like going outside a lot, exploring nature. We, and we would sing all the time and we would take make instruments ourselves and improvise and make make up stories and she my daughter grew up in this kind of fairy tale where everything I, it, was it, it, it's, you know, nice. it, 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 it's nice yeah. that you have like you put a lot of focus on your children and their musical um uh, their teachings and uh, that they have learned but they think may i ask how how big is your family how big is your family two children all right all right two children so like uh, what i've understood uh, from your you know youtube and uh, with your videos that you are very closely with artyom and you and your children you like uh, have this kind of uh, uh, that uh, very, very very connected works that, that perhaps you compose a song your children will animate it and something like that yeah could you tell something yeah. about that um i was kind of always dreaming about having children that would be not just under me, but and, and the same with my husband. We would be on the same level of creating and sharing ideas. So that's what we do, basically. From time to time, I would get a text from my daughter that we would write a song about. Many of my first songs happened that way. Or Artie would give me a few notes and we would start writing a song from there and it would just take off pretty fast into a full composition. Or my son, he's the biggest improviser of us all, I think. Really? He has the <laughs> greatest than you? Than you? composing. Yeah, he would sit at the piano and give you amazing harmonies right away and remember them without any struggle and continue them, developing them. I never taught him, but like I said, because he was homeschooled and I was doing different styles of music with my children all the time, and I opened a daycare for them. To be oh. in, in my own daycare oh. with other children. This, actually, actually, this, in this room, it this was, room used to be a daycare before, before, six years ago. Yeah, before becoming a piano studio, it was a daycare, a main daycare room because, well, oh. it didn't stay in one room, it just spread across the entire house. Yeah, we, and we really? converted like, the may, may, house. I, may I ask something about that? So, so you had a, 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 like, a full were there other yeah. kids like from uh, your kids, apart from your kids? Yeah, older, younger, doesn't matter. Uh, oh, around 
six children daily uh, educating here, spending time with music and good food and going outside together. Artie built a wagon mm-hmm. for them. We call, we would call ourselves the Red Wagon Daycare. He made a, a handmade wagon oh, for driving oh, six oh, children oh, at oh, once. Oh, But you see, at this point, of course, I was not making any professional music. I was just okay. kind of teaching again. But not, I liked uh, it like a lot. Not, not the primary focus. So yes, uh, but it was not. She the had same she had music, but it was like uh, on the same level as uh, I don't know, doing some uh, like drawing something or like. This is uh, interesting. Kind of this is interesting because many artists, especially women, as you said, they have to do a lot of sacrifices for their family if they want to have a family. Especially, you know, like uh, raising children, uh, that must take a lot of time. I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying with experience because I'm yet to, to go into that direction future. But I must imagine it will be a. Uh, it, it's it's a big thing. So. Uh, you took a lot of time, you know, uh, caring about your family. But could you do any musical projects in that time for, or was it like just zero percent nothing? It's just it was teaching, like I said, it was teaching other children how to be young musicians. So we would compose on spot with them with a digital oh. piano and some drums and no, but that was far it wasn't from for, but it was just kind of like a music so, le- a music lesson one of many lessons in uh, say like in a daycare and early it was really fun but it was not real me so i was uh, quite de- not depressed but i i felt like i you could i needed to mind that i'm not myself so yeah. Artie reminded me from time to time that we would fight Because yeah, because uh, me, we're not you know, doing anything together. You know, you, you know how it is. Like when you are, uh, you become kind of obsessed with something. You cannot really see uh, out of your box. So Milana yes, thought yes, that uh, yes, she is actually enjoying the daycare, and of course there were moments of uh, enjoying it for sure. Uh, but I felt like uh, she is uh, just uh, being exhausted. Uh, and I was, yeah. Like waking up uh, at yeah, yeah. six a.m. and, and if, yeah, and finishing like uh, after 10 p.m. after cleaning after all the kids and so on and preparing and cooking food for them for for the next day. And I kept saying like, uh, it's not exactly yours. I don't feel like this is your your pass. Uh, and I felt like your pass is uh, music. And they kept trying to convince her, and yes, we got those fights when Milana said, you don't know what you are talking about, uh, like, I am not uh, that great, I'm not that experienced, you just mm-hmm. don't know that, you never heard real brilliant musicians. What so. was the turning point? When did that happen? Uh, we brought it to the, mo- to the point when we oh, almost no. divorced. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, yeah, I started What's thinking about... Well, no, there's a lot of things yeah, that are not connected to it's, music. It's kind of, it's kind of. It's uh, it's been what seven seven years since we were together. Yeah, we can. Usually, we, they say that uh, when you're with somebody for seven years, it's it's the checkpoint. Check it, checkpoint. It's, it's a crisis. Second crisis. Second crisis. Uh, so, third crisis. Oh, they yeah. say first one is after one year, another one after three years, and then seven years. So seven years, you know. We moved to Canada, and while moving, it was a uh, time to stressful. Uh, it's stressful time. But some felt like this is their home and they belong. The others decided to move on, and it might be uh, you know when you start moving from one country to another, you cannot stop. Uh, it's kind of uh, you can never cur- really belong. I yeah, guess belong, have a I- home in some yeah, in in one country. I I I understand what oh, what you mean. You, yeah. you find a comfortable place to live. Yes. Uh, so why did so you choose uh, Canada in the in the last uh, destination, so to speak? Uh, we don't know <laughs> about the last, but the most recent. Uh, no, it was mostly. Um, it's quiet. It's not too far. It's pretty quiet, and it's very extremely friendly to immigrants. But my father, a musician, when he came to Israel, well, he he got not no big luck in finding work. He didn't really believe in himself that he could be a musician anymore. And he was a professional musician in Ukraine, in in Soviet Union. So seeing him, how he came to Israel and he gave up right away, I was kind of following his path subconsciously. I also kind of said, "Mm, music is not paying, you know, I, I will not be a musician. But in Canada, somehow we got 
back with artist help, I started believing that making music as my main career is possible, even though it may not be as big as uh, he would dream for me. Yet it will be. When, 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 the, when the major change happened, when did you start like believing, okay, this might be a career, and what were the first steps for that? Well, first steps were uh, to just sit at the piano and uh, starting trying out ideas. So Artie gave me some three or four notes, and he would say, improvise, what can you do about Those it? Those ones, yes. Yeah. That was, um, it's about time. Uh, he just played this one. I took it to full composition. It's about it's about time. It's on my first album. It's feeling the emptiness. When the, when was it? When was that? Yeah, it's completely free improvisation. It was six years ago. Six years ago. So two composers, Bach and Tchaikovsky, were Tchaikovsky. All right, all right. Really influential in my way of how I I I saw that music is made in so such different way. One was so intelligent and meditational, and the other one is so emotional. It, they always kind of went together inside me, both of those composers. Of course, later when I started playing Grieg, all of a sudden my ears were like, what? You know, the Grieg and his uh, Norwegian interesting harmonies then later on led me to Debussy and, and jazz and so, so you I, had a classical background, but then it grew, yeah. grew from there. What, what do you think it's the you know most major thing a composer could get from the classical style compared to any others on your mind? While playing somebody else's composition, you and seeing the score, first of all, you learn how it's done technically. But um, for me, most inspiring is to read their stories also, because their stories are meaningful. Many of those people were traveling, so I re really related to those people who traveled a lot. From, from, I don't know, somehow, when I started improvising, a lot of people would tell me, you sound like Rachmaninoff. I wouldn't. I still didn't know who that was, but I... Now no, I, I hear that... I knew the name, but I, I, I never played him. I was not really? big are you enough. Serious? No, I, I'm now I'm playing him, of, oh, course, of course, but course. I was improvising a few years ago. I still didn't play him. I just heard the name, but I, I never listened to him. Because when I left at the eighth grade, I couldn't play Rachmaninoff yet. My hands were pretty small and my technique was still growing. So it, his story of immigrants moving and never finding the place to belong, Rachmaninoff's story really re rings with me today. And today I'm more than ever, more than ever experiencing some emotions that he could have. And I understand why it sounded like him a little bit before I started playing him. It was so amazing. Yeah, it, it's really interesting. It, 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 is, it is quite inspirational. And those stories overall uh, that, you know, the, the personal experiences those composers have to go through. Uh, I, I see, I see. So... Uh, one thing I would really want to ask you that you, you, you just described how you came to Canada and then you had the daycare, you had t took time from the music, then you kind of got back to it a little bit, but how did it transition from that you just uh, started playing to become a professional and selling your own music? Because that must be more complex, uh, more easier said than done, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, well, Artie is such a big believer in me that he would, when we started improvising, we would uh, look for a ways to put the music out there. And he discovered SoundCloud, I think, right? Yeah. At this point. I, I don't even remember how it happened. And you Probably remember just... because we met you on SoundCloud, right? Yeah, yeah I, I just. That's true. That's true. So when, if when I remember... did you begin uh, using SoundCloud? Six, six years, five years ago? 2012. Well, six years now. 2012, in somewhere in July. Yeah, I, I started in 2013, and what I understand today, like you have grown really big there. I think like 23,000 followers. Quite extraordinary. Yeah. But oh, it's, it's uh, it, it complicated. It's, it's <laughs> not that simple. It's there, not all yes. peachy. There, there is not. not all, is, is, yeah. 
yeah, there is a special uh, story about that. So when we joined SoundCloud, and it was uh, really uh, some uh, discovery. It's like wow, it's a whole community of uh, whole musicians, musicians. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, different really styles. Cool. And uh, when we put, uh, but it was also scary for me. I remember that. Yes, I kind of put Milana's recording. Every, any comment that I would get, I would first get like <gasps> butterflies in my stomach. What if they don't, you know? Yes, yeah, so I understand, and I understand don't getting like me. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and for me it was a kind of a, a way to show Milana that, uh, you see, other people uh, like your music, not just me, I can be biased, uh, well, I am your you husband, are. yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> family often not, family often not. So yes, I put it on SoundCloud and we started gaining uh, followers, and not just followers, we just, uh, like other people uh, started asking Milana to collaborate with them. Uh, so... Uh, and we took it what really... Kind of uh, what kind of musicians and artists? Different ones. Oh, different first, styles. I think it was uh, Sean. Sean, right. Sean, uh, uh, I don't remember his, uh, his nickname because he changed it several times. But uh, somebody just asked me, you have such a nice voice, and I didn't really believe that, but I, I was trying, yeah. So I sang on his track, and he said, wow, your voice is so much fun. And piano as well, on. no? And some piano lines, some piano and, and well, some yes. bass. Uh, it was no, no, it was uh, uh, other, uh, after that. Right, so it, I, some... it, it was the other way around. We asked him to play on our song. Yeah, and then yeah. Yes. All right, so, all right. So you yeah, but, you started using SoundCloud, and it kind of like uh, what was so so did it um, stop uh, in in you know like uh, after you started getting comments? Was it like as you, as you Artyom explained, it was like uh, oh I'm so thrilled to get perhaps people see my music. Am I so am I good? Am I bad? And like w what did happen in the long term when you started getting a lot of comments, a lot of people seeing your music yeah. and uh, commenting? You want to tell the story? I can tell the story that. Like um, a lot of things happened, both positive and negative. It was overwhelming because when you start pu putting yourself out there for people, it's a full-time job that I couldn't take on myself. So we had to, Artie had to really help me to sometimes answer for me or... Sometimes. Most, most <laughs> yeah. of the time, I'm sorry, I still had the daycare at this time. No, 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 that's okay. Yeah. I am not... Still then, you still had daycare, <laughs> but even you started sound. Yes. Oh. For uh, and first, then, uh, first, first year. year, I still had the daycare and several already performances and recordings. And it was, I was exhausted, but it was really fun. It was the first, so the first okay. half a year, it was a... Uh, Kind of collaboration uh, frenzy on SoundCloud. Uh, we recorded uh, uh, many times. We recorded like two uh, two collaborations, uh, two Each three night? collaborations. No, every or week, every week. week. Yes, every know. week. So it's like. Uh, but I remember schedule. when you're done, you and RT is done you, his job, and I'm done my job at six. That's it. We go to the basement. We don't. We hardly saw kids. And we just started making music or collaborating or yeah whatever. Yeah. And then half a year and half a year it was uh, <laughs> it was seen and uh, recognized. Uh, uh, so SoundCloud at that time uh, they were more into all kind of community uh, oriented uh, in, like initiatives like SoundCloud. Was SoundCloud, SoundCloud, of the day, SoundCloud of the day. It was yeah. yeah. SoundCloud then, was quite different back in the day. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it, had, it, had more, it had more focus on just like bringing artists more, so you could catch that kind of wave. I yeah, yeah. We kind of caught it. Yes, yeah. and SoundCloud. So, so uh, for two years they uh, had the pro program of uh, SoundCloud Hero. So uh, they named four. They chose forty uh, SoundClouders and they named them uh, SoundCloud Heroes for being uh, like most active, most influential In members. Uh, members of uh, of the community, uh, and by that time, like in that first half a year, uh, we've done like uh, sixty or seventy collaborations, uh, recording like f yes, recording for others. So the open the other way around, <laughs> like other people recorded. Uh, like we had Milana, Milana, one of Milana's songs uh, uh, recorded with uh, drums coming from Japan and uh, oh. bass coming bass coming from. Uh, uh, Australia? From Australia yeah. and, and so on, so it's How like all over. How did that your musical Actually, view overall? You collaborated with a ton of people. 
Yeah, and album we album? started uh, actually Sorry? making our yeah. own albums. That uh, was the I first mean, time. Like, uh, uh, you have uh, you collaborated with a lot of people with, I think, a lot of different musical styles, I presume. So how did that affect your musical style? It made me actually very um, curious and inspired to try different styles, even uh, some operatic singing, which I never did before. Or I'm, I'm saying it made me try styles that I would never try before. Like I did a bit of jazz, but this time it was more strict. So it was blues or, or it was oriental music and even oriental singing from time to time, which I never tried. I just kind of did it intuitively. So I, um, And when we liked the result of all those different styles, we came up, Artie came up with the idea, let's make an album, let's release it. And so he searched it up on all the important details. And we did the first album that was Vibrant Universe, I think. Yes, Vibrant Universe. It was actually, we were recording, we were spending our you know, nights and uh, evening nights on recording Lana songs. And uh, we didn't really plan to release uh, anything before that. We planned to release uh, the first album with Lana songs. But uh, to rest in between those uh, recording sessions, uh, while Milana was just improvising, uh, we recorded those improvisations on different instruments. Like we got a uh, propeller hat reason, and it was another discovery. Like wow! Like mm -hmm. now you can play all those instruments, uh, and they are all at your finger uh, fingertips. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, and uh, we started recording those, and they, then. Uh, after recording a couple, the concept was born uh, of uh, like even the names and uh, of the tracks, and I think uh, we it actually influ uh, influenced uh, the way we choose uh, how to name tracks for for future albums. So many of our future albums they uh, follow so the same. You kind of have concept. themes for your albums. Yes. Yeah. What kind of could you give us examples? So the first track on that first album, it was called, uh, it's not the first track on the album, but it was the first one that was recorded. Uh, it was called Once Upon a Star. And it was kind of spacey, ambient, and they all followed the same uh, kind of uh, style. Some uh, uh, amb ambient scenes or ambient pads with uh, piano melodies, spacious piano melodies. So there was no, there was no uh, uh, concrete beat? Yeah, it was, it was just flowing tempo, just instrumental and floating kind of. Okay, okay. Yes, it's a soundtrack kind of. Yes, and then we added on top of that we added vocalization, and uh, one of my hobbies uh, was to write uh, haiku. <laughs> so we uh, wrote like I wrote half of those haikus for uh, for each track. So each track. Uh, begins with a with a haiku so milana uh narrates not sing like not it was it's not singing it's more like narrating a haiku and then the track uh, the track begins all right uh, so what well, was, was that kind of album work was that your major first breakthrough could you describe it like that no i wouldn't say so it was all gradual steps it was more like a learning experience uh how to uh like the whole pipeline from the recording mixing then preparing the artwork and now looking at that artwork i uh, <laughs> I'm smiling because it's really naive, like all our following albums, they were way more... Gradually uh, more and more interesting. So yes. Uh, it developed along the way, I suppose? Yeah, of yeah, course, yes. yeah, like, like naturally it evolves. But, but to learn how to, like, to learn about TuneCore, CD Baby, uh, and to learn about uh, how to release a CD, because we are old school, Old, old schoolers, so we like to have all our albums on CDs, so we have all of them on CD. Uh, so we found that uh, Create Space, uh, Amazon Division, that prints CDs on demand, so you don't need to uh, to print like thousand copies, and so they after that they sit in your boxes. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, it's just a sad feeling. But yeah, uh, we have a few of those as well. Yes, what well, but... <laughs> present you can give uh, to people and your family, your members. Right. Yeah. yeah, we do. It's a right. special present that. Yeah. Yeah, as special. I was joking, uh, as I was joking about this, we have uh, quite a pool for uh, for presents for for the next twenty years. Or so. <laughs> 
Ja <laughs> ex, expect Milana CDs uh, for you know, the regulati- uh, your, your, to your relatives and uh, I, I assume, I assume. Yeah, yeah so of but, course they have well, a well, collection. Well, one, one thing I would like yeah. to ask, what was actually your first musical breakthrough, the, something which could uh, bring Milana's name to hundreds and thousands of people? What was that? Well, for me, it was a first uh, first round winning the national song songwriters contest. It was when I just started. It was it's about time the first song. It won the first round of the big yes. contest in uh, in, the city. Uh, in the city. But it was later. It was supposed to go for nationals, and it didn't go because oh, I didn't. Right. I didn't make it further. But that that winning and um, we had the first kind of attempt to make a band. I was invited, or I don't remember how it happened. We looked it up, or was I invited when was to play? This? Could you tell me the year it's, uh, to follow up? Yeah, it was 2012. Five, five years ago. 2012, six years ago. Six years ago. Yes, same year, same same half a year. All right, all right. It was all like months after months, something happened, something else happened, you know, it, it's piling up. But so, like, uh, you have this lucky position to have your family, Artyom, to uh, work with you, you know, he's not well, like... Uh, Uh, or, or every day, just like where's my paycheck? Where's my paycheck? Kind of, kind of a way. Or I don't know. How 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 does your collaboration work together? <laughs> well, Milana. We have our ups and downs. Uh, Milana is a musician, and I, uh, as Milana already mentioned, so my mom, she is a lyricist, and uh, also she, a musician. Yeah, she published several books with her poems and translations of Shakespeare and uh, Garcia Lorca and some other uh, known. Uh, Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, my father, uh, he is more, he's a uh, hardware engineer, uh, and he is more into uh, audio equipment side of things. Uh, and uh, I was raised in that family from like musician on one side, or more like lyricists, and uh, someone who is more into audio equipment on the other side. So I kind of grabbed from both. Mm-hmm. And I'm uh, I like good music, and I like uh, when it sounds uh, good. I can say that uh, I'm uh, completely happy with uh, uh, the level of our recordings, uh, but uh, definitely improved. Uh, so, uh, so you have a lot of technical knowledge about you know musical instruments and prog- programs and uh, whatnot. Yes. I, I would call myself like an advanced amateur. <laughs> or semi-professional, so uh, I just like to learn so about music uh, instruments. So yeah, I read some uh, articles. I can't say that I studied it. Just what, like natural curiosity. Have you, Artyom, uh, been part of Milana's music, like singing or playing an instrument? Uh, singing, yes, once, yes. But uh, uh, my uh, major contribution is to find those. Uh, uh, Motives, melodic motives, short melodic melodic motives, and oh. half of our albums were born like this. So I just come to keys and uh, do something like I don't know, like. And I like black keys, yes. And Milana often often says that uh, well, it's not musical. Uh, and uh, I reply back like, okay, uh, now make it musical. You as a musician. So, and she no. she got this. Uh, talent of taking it uh, and making a full composition on the spot just right there yeah that uh, is that is why i really wanted to ask about milana you know, the improvisation i saw one tv interview i think it was some canadian tv network uh, there was yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, like uh, you played an improvisation live there and i was really amazed could i ask uh, tell me something about improvisation Well, how do you improvise and uh, how does it work, actually? It's one of the most difficult questions and all the professionals are like, oh, how do I answer that? Well, uh, it's What a certain state of, of Well, my, my view on that is that it's it's certain state of mind when you're either so stressed that you can't think anymore, you just can you can just play, so you... You better be a good player to improvise, or it's actually the opposite when you're completely amateur and we're completely unaware of how keys come together. You could try; it could sound horrible, maybe not. I don't know. 
there are different kinds of improvisation. So there is a structured jazz improvisation, which is something that I still study. And it, it's not easy for me, actually. Because when I let go, I, I'd rather play free jazz, which is not structured at all. It's just un oh, subconscious see. flow. And it sounds beautiful, but you cannot teach it to somebody else because it's just like what Keith, Keith Jarrett is doing. He just relaxes. But he relaxes after hours and hours of classical and jazz training. So you cannot be completely immature and just try to improvise and it will sound good. Not necessarily. So like so the improvisation is a weird concept even among some uh, musical uh, aspects and uh, you know uh, some musical schools like classical I've met many people with classical uh, learning and they are v they, they it's very alien to them the improvisation overall yes. and what do you think is that is like you say it's kind of a relaxing and uh, brings melody melodies together but why so why it is so alien for some musicians it was lost. I just saw a few programs on uh, on TV about that. It's actually a quite big res research about that because it should not be lost. It, it was a part of the culture when Bach and Mozart were performing and Beethoven was improvising a lot. What happened? And, and they all Japan did. It was a part of the training and then when all the scores appeared and it was so convenient to play from the score, it was somewhere lost between the scores, I guess. But some schools are still doing that, and I, I'm glad, I'm, I'm happy to admit that Piano Adventures, uh, the books that I follow with my students, uh, not the only book that I follow, but Piano Adventures really brought back the concept of improvisation from the very beginning. They kind of try to teach children how to improvise. And it actually works. But you just said that it it is hard to I teach. Can you thought. teach improvisation to people? Yes, you can, yeah. How? You begin with very simple steps, like, okay, let's choose a rhythm and improvise on the rhythm only, on a single note. And there are big schools of improvisation in education, in musical education. There was, uh, I think, Carl Orff who did it in his method and so it's not like completely alien you just need to research it a little bit so and is it uh, so is it yeah. just a part of all musical specs or like what i'm uh, taking from your um dialogue i'm taking that it's a whole new kind of a um school of music in a way in a sense which was lost is that right could that be to me it is and i think it's uh, a necessity you cannot teach somebody to really play without letting him at least a little bit to improvise, to think in terms of music and composing. So, right. yeah, I, w I would say it's not an alien thing at all. It's just maybe in class, some classical education, it was for some reason missed, left out, but not a, not a good idea. Better bring it in. All so. right, all right. Uh, How did you make your prof uh, Korea work, like for, in places like SoundCloud, or did you jump to other platforms? I know, other yeah, platforms of course, uh, SoundCloud, SoundCloud was uh, more uh, of a learning and networking experience. So, from SoundCloud uh, on SoundCloud, we met uh, many great composers, and then we just continued uh, continued networking with them and communicating with them and learned about just following their path following what they are doing, uh, we tried to, to mimic, to mimic and do like to similar... Study from their success, and I, I must say the first one would be probably Oliver Sadie. Yes, he Oliver He also Sadie, right. proposed us to be the SoundCloud heroes, so he kind of pushed us in that way direction. So he's did, a great, first of all, this SoundCloud episode. hero thing give you a lot of connections around uh, that platform? Uh, you know, yes, At that time, yes. yes. And no, I would, say, I would say they gave a lot of followers, but SoundCloud hero, uh, well, it was the first uh, big uh, acknowledgement of, uh, uh, it's like official thing that says, here it is, you are... Like influential musician. Uh, so yeah, we we used that title to write on down on first concerts. Yes. On, on the concert to write down not just Milana Zilnik, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, first SoundCloud, the only SoundCloud hero in Canada. You know. Yes. 
you know, it's, it's a funny. pretty nice title. It's a pretty nice title. Yeah. Yeah. So although you know, <laughs> nobody the, knows who SoundCloud is. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, even I didn't know before this. Like it, it's weird how the SoundCloud it, it does not really market this as well as YouTube because YouTube has this like if you have million followers you get this kind of yep. title and this kind yeah. of title. Uh, Only later we discovered. On sound, so on SoundCloud, a sorry, uh, yeah, on sound, uh, more like on SoundCloud, <laughs> uh, when we used to say like we are the first Canadian musicians who got this title SoundCloud here, and people would respond like, uh, "Good for you, great! Uh, what is SoundCloud?" <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you, you, you get those kind of uh, replies often, even today. Yeah, but how, how did you expand uh, from there? And of course, I've heard you have had a lot of. Uh, concerts as well. Could you tell us about uh, those ventures? Well, when um, I think when we released the album, we kind of thought it would be really nice to perform and to offer people the album as not as a gift, but as something else to support us financially. Merchandise. We, we invested so much money in the recording studio and uh, we, we would think how music could actually feed us. So there are many ways you, when you release an album, you can try and um, write down, uh, send it to several radio stations. And one of them actually, or two of them took the albums and actually played them. So I could get royalties later on if I'm uh, not big ones. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, yes, I did. Oh, yes, I did mostly the studying about this and it's like the royalties. Uh, yeah, this is why we moved to licensing platform and uh, actually got several uh, nice placements in there. Yeah, like, uh, of course, like uh, for financial things, it's uh, like a private matter. But can I ask, can you leave out of the music you currently do? Mm. <laughs> Without teaching, probably. Without no. teaching, no. Not at this ah, point, at least. All right, all right. No. So I do, okay. I do have a few session recordings. So the teaching is kind of still the main thing for for you, even after this. Yes, but it, it is kind of the music career and your compositions are growing in that uh, more uh, over time. We certainly hope that I would overcome the daily teaching and just kind of pursue more daily composing but for now so daily teaching is eating most of my time i'm sorry to say and then i'm just tired at night i could try to compose but it's not the same energy yeah, I so i sometimes that and sometimes i just don't and i used to perform much more when i was a bit younger a few years back i would just make myself go to open mics and, and organize the concerts more than i do today because today i already organized a few we organized a few concerts and the people are not coming that easily. There's not a big audience, and it costs money to rent a hall or to print it out is, all the advertisements. So it's it's a very tricky path. You need to try that, of course, to see for yourself. The thing is, like, but, I I did myself those calculations, and uh, uh, from single concert, it's really difficult to get any returns uh, if you go for touring, right? But uh, if you add up all the uh, especially, in some, everything. Uh, yeah, yeah, especially yeah. in some unknown place, you go to out of town, you go to some other town, uh, to the place where people don't know you. And uh, this is a trick with uh, or the cash with the online platforms. Uh, you may get lots of followers, but they will be somewhere They're on the other side of the world. kind of you. Like, uh, it, it's hard to combine all of them into one place. Is that right? Right. That's right. Yes. That, that's why so, today with YouTube uh, live or Facebook live performances, at least you could gather more followers this way. So um, live, you know, from you, the you studio... Really really couldn't, uh, <laughs> you couldn't, uh, you know, get exchanged money out of those, at least, what I've not Scene. You you do get it not directly because when people really like your music and sometimes that happens to me I get those fans that would buy my albums, buy my uh, books with my scores because oh, they like. I gotcha, I gotcha. So, much. so you know it, it all contributes. So we I, I would say that like RT is pushing me towards trying everything a little bit and see what I like Ooh. more and what works now. And what works yes because it's yeah. a, it's such a and this is fun. It's a no, dynamic. It's yeah, that's yeah. how it, that's how to grow. That's how to grow. 
periodically I think that I'm just falling behind in uh, just following everything, trying to, to see like where to go, uh, like one step behind. Uh, like with the recent changes on uh, Facebook when they stopped uh, showing YouTube videos in the feed uh, and yeah, stuff like this. So, really and, you need, and, and you need to switch immediately and just uh, decide for yourself uh, whether you are okay with posting videos on Facebook itself instead of just uploading them to YouTube and posting a, a, a link. Uh, but it's kind of a switch. You need to adjust all, yeah. all, all the time. In this middle, I would really want to say that, you know, Facebook is generally not a platform where a small people can generate money. For people who are watching this video, I would not recommend, at least for myself, I don't know about you, but I would not recommend uh, only focusing on Facebook because if you build uh, your videos on Facebook alone it they, they are they are not the same as working with YouTube videos they are they are quite the different kind of style you have to do a lot smaller kind of videos uh, against the uh, videos of YouTube and SoundCloud music which have to be longer would you agree on that uh, yes we would but I would add on my side before mm -hmm. RT adds up that artists constantly reminding me you need to be a person first you need to be a personality and I, I rarely have the time to just post anything on Facebook just to say you know I'm alive I took a, I, I drank a tea I went out I don't often do that unfortunately it's a big mistake for an artist like me because people do want to know my personality but I have no time I try to compose and teach and go oh, yeah 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 it's, it's, it's like a, if you if you use all of your time to just building your personality uh, it takes away from your work but people attach more to your personality so I'm saying Facebook is important just maybe not to put the music out but just to yeah, put your yeah. personality it's out, a reality yes. show so yeah. it's more a reality show than, <laughs> than the music. Music is kind of, uh, it, it becomes a secondary thing, uh, not, uh, not the primary. Like it's you are the artist, yes, and people like your music, right? But they want to see uh, y like your life, not just to listen to your music, because just listen to your music. Uh, they can go to on Spotify and listen to your track. That's it. Uh, they don't need to follow you for that. Um, but yeah, it's it's full time job actually. And uh, yeah, you would need an extra person for that at least on my mind. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. I I would say extra two people because two. is already managing everything and trying, doing a good job so far. And he is also behind the sounds and behind the big decisions and behind financial decisions. So we are missing on a guy who would just, you know, put an advertisement somewhere or just, uh, I don't know, do my hair. I need to do my hair from it's, time it's, to time. Hey, it's oh, all, yeah, yeah, continue, continue. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay, it's, it's a big, it, it's also a big thing that uh, while. Uh, uh, being uh, kind of real on Facebook and showing uh, sometimes some maybe some goofy photos and so on, but uh, that's funny that uh, you also need to actually prepare for that. There is nothing like you just go and take random no, photos. No, you need to like prepare that. makeup. You need to prepare hair. You need to think about light. You need to think and, about and then, that. and then you pose like ah. Oh. I just woke up like that. Yes, I just woke up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have my... and, and, you, yeah. and, and you have to write all the, you know, like uh, descriptions on it, like, oh, I just yeah. woke up, it's my middle morning and something like that, you know. You know. Oh, yeah. but, 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 the thing, but the thing is, like, uh, you, you're talking about the platforms, but uh, you're currently, you know, you are going, your goal is a professional career and that you are able to live fully from the music you do. What are the next steps? What are you going to do? What are the big next steps? I don't know. No. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's a good point. So when, we, so when uh, uh, I personally thought about like what are the options and what are the different options, uh, so uh, yeah, albums is not an option, not nowadays, unless Why you not? get uh, because uh, people don't buy albums. They do once in a concert, one 
I mean, I, I, I also saw it not just for us. I, I saw it maybe, well, maybe, maybe, maybe we are small, like small. But we periodically, we periodically go to concert of really big artists, and I see that there are no waiting lines on the like to to merchandise to CDs yeah, or whatever. Like, yeah. They no. would rather buy a T-shirt or a cup, but not a CD. But for somebody big, not like yeah. me, of course. Is but it many because people... of the internet and uh, you know SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube? Is it because of that? Probably, yeah. yeah. It's just so uh, music is available for free now, right? Mm -hmm. So, but but also many people just don't have any device to play the oh, play CDs on. Yeah, that's oh, another that's thing. True, that's true. That's killing really it. even CDs. <laughs> Well, this laptop that we are using right now, it doesn't have any CD. <laughs> are, you, are you serious? Oh, yeah, yeah, it goes out of developing fast, but, but, unfortunately. But also tab tablets and, uh, and phones and so on, they don't have, like, you have your Wi-Fi connection and you go on Spotify and you, and you listen there, or you go on YouTube and listen there. So CDs, no, like, there is no... Uh, Every time we release an album, so yes, yeah, so we, we, we sell uh, in the first like wave, uh, we sell, uh, I don't know, up to maybe uh, 50 in the first uh, couple, two, two, three months. Then it continues, uh, like periodically fading people are yeah, fading out and period sporadic uh, purchases. And on, have... Sp on Spotify, on SoundCloud, <laughs> we get uh, some periodic stream of, uh, uh, of royalties. Mm, I can't say it's covering, so it's it's not unless you get really you get millions uh, millions of yeah, followers. The traffic is uh, the key, but how to get bigger traffic? That's the question. That's the tricky part. Sometimes you just get lucky and you break through with one track. It happens, yeah. or one album. It just happens sometimes. So, so we got one track that was uh, distributed through the publisher that we are working with, and oh, uh, what, track is that? what song is that? Awakening on Spotify. All right, all right. So you have a publisher we, for your music. Yeah. Well, like uh, those, years, uh, yes, right? like those yeah. publishing agencies. There are many of them. You just choose uh, which one we to work with, one. and uh, they find uh, all those licensing platforms. Usually, they work, uh, they do several things at once. They also work on the licensing side, and they uh, try to to find some uh, labels to include your tracks in uh, some compilation albums. So one of those tracks that we never released ourselves on any part of the album, we just upload it to, uh, to the publisher side, and uh, it was included in some album, some compilation album, and now it's on uh, some Reiki yoga uh, playlist on Spotify, and uh, yeah, it's getting uh, some plays, uh, however, uh, after Spotify takes their part, after label takes their part, after publisher takes their part. <laughs> yeah, it's, so, it's a small uh, revenue which is left for yeah, that, uh, I, I imagine. It uh, pays for a cup of coffee. Uh, really, like uh, on Spotify, oh, you, you really need to get like million uh, plays to get a uh, couple thousand dollars. What are your thoughts on so, the actually making money as a music nowadays? Because you say like the for people, because the music is so accessible in everywhere, it's uh, the the yeah. value of music has kind of dropped down. So how musicians as uh, and small ones can live from their work. Is it, so is, it either, is it concerts from in YouTube or what, what, what is it? What is what is it's it? Either, what is there? It's concerts. It's uh, besides teaching because teaching is uh, the kind of the straightforward oh, part. And and it says, yes, but uh, being a session musician to record for someone. So from SoundCloud, since we got so many collaborators, some of them started actually paying on their own even they, they were the first one to offer me come yes. on i'll pay you it's a big job so and then we nice. started getting those uh you know the experience and then now uh, people strangers professional sometimes turn to me and and those recordings are precious but they're not a daily basis so it's something else so I would uh, say it, 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 it gets occasionally you know those kind of gigs gig projects yeah uh, it, it occasionally becomes more, get paid becomes for more. some small concerts, yeah, but no, again, it's for now it's really rare. Uh, recording sessions? No. no concerts. Ah, concert, concert, no, concert, yes, but recording uh, recording sessions, it becomes more and more periodic uh, thing. But it's, it, but it's, it's building up. 
you really need you get some uh, returning returning cl clients who liked uh, what you did and then they ask again for their next project uh, like this is one of the recent recordings he liked the sound of the piano and he said yeah well great I for, for my next project I want to work with you and I want to uh, like your piano so and those your kind piano. of occasional projects which you know people uh, come to you and suggest but uh, have you looked them yourself you know went to people and hey let's do this kind of it project both it both ways you look for them you I look for us it's both ways so you advertise your services and you build uh, but it's completely different direction so it's not the direction of albums and so on it's it, it's a professional direction when you are your clients are not music consumers but your clients are songwriters composers and so on who needs your uh, skills as a pianist as a vocalist for their work I see, I see. So, like a singer for their song. May I ask one question? Like, um, you have been, like, last December, you were working on this big Indiegogo project, am I right? This kind of, uh, nope. I, I really wanted to get into this, this, uh, this project where you were having a uh, Snow Queen. Uh, is that the name? Is that the name? Yeah. Like yeah, a very, so very big, yeah. pro very big production for your own music. There's uh, dancers, there's uh, you singing and piano playing and you had a big, big dress, you know, as an ice queen. Could you tell something about that? That was pretty major. Yeah, yeah see, uh, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, we decided to go, Artie decided that we need to go on touring. And why? Because I'm such a cool composer, I can do anything on spot, so our concerts would be completely improvised, and uh, the people, maybe hopefully the audience, somebody would really like my music so much that they could buy the CD, they could come to more concerts, and they could maybe offer me a composing opportunity. They would actually pay me for composing music I for see, them. So we were, we did those uh, very nice videos, professional videos, um, to advertise me as a composer and to advertise the touring and the concerts and it was so uh, it was totally different level of involvement for me i needed to look differently uh, more um, more professional you had your artist persona just it. much harder to get to those toronto touring stages because there were bigger stages than I was ever before. And I was so inspired that I actually, I also wrote a song that was completely different level. I, I wrote a song that was theatrical. It was like the beginning of the musical. And back then I was thinking, maybe I'd even write a full musical. You never know. Maybe I will. Mm -hmm. I just need yes, more time. Oh, of course, of course. So that song, it, since it sounded so different, it was not jazz, not rock, not pop anymore. It was just... Theatrical. Broadway musical Artie, style, yes. Artie decided that... Mm, so the Snow Queen was video. that. So no Snow Queen was yes. that. Yeah. And it certainly caught a lot of attention from anybody who listened to that. Even, well, especially professional musicians would say, wow, you know. Pretty yeah. good. It was so pretty big. Well, yeah. It was pretty big, and and what I understood, you really advertised it everywhere, and the video and all. It, it like for me at least, it felt like uh, you're some kind of a, a Disney musical kind of uh, uh, some some yeah. very very big musical number. Uh, I would say. Uh, how did you, uh, like so so it started from this small idea, but how did the process go? Could you enlighten me on that? <laughs> Yeah. We, we have a lot recorded. of videos on YouTube from behind the scenes that tells exactly two, tells two the story. hours, two four hours of our chats Additional with some behind the materials. scenes and so on. Uh, so oh. there are videos uh, like th th that's funny because the video itself is five minutes long, uh, but those behind, behind the, scenes the scenes talk five is, hours long. Yeah. No, we cut it to two. We'll but cut we it to two, but the work. Oh, nice. Yes, we documented uh, how we looked for the venue, how we composed music, how we designed decorations, how we looked for uh, theatrical props, because this whole project was some, was was learning experience from the beginning to the end. We shot some music videos before, not on that level. So we didn't know at first uh, neither whom to work with on the video part. Uh, what concept of like script? We needed to write the script. We needed to. Artie did everything by himself, actually. Yes, I, I, I wrote the script. So Artie was kind of a driving force behind this, or something. 
Yeah, well, I came back from work and I uh, heard this song. <laughs> and uh, uh, Milana, I asked for many years, like, just try to tango, write a tango. Like, you should try to write a tango. And then she, she like, when we were talking on the phone and I was driving from work, uh, so she said, uh, I wrote a tango song. And I was like, wow. And <laughs> and we uh, and I came home and I listened to the song and I said like, this is this is a song that I want to to have a professional video for. And it sounded like this. Uh, I just asked for some uh, professional video. And then uh, we did some initial orchestration and then we worked with uh, someone we met on SoundCloud, Jeff Torres. Another uh, composer yes, who uh, he, did a few of my he, piano solos orchestrations. And yes, uh, we he like was, each other's work. Yes, yeah, so he listened kind of to the friends. Friends. Uh, may, 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 may I ask in the be between? So before that, had you had a lot of you know con connection for orchestral music? Had you done a lot of uh, orchestration notation for many instruments and combinations before this project? How we actually tried to have those books that I studied, but we did it mostly intuitively as well. Even before I got the books and I started studying it. So Arti has a really good ear, good taste in combining things, and I have not a bad ear for musical ideas. So together it works well, yeah. But it wasn't massive or really professional. It was a trying out. Oh, one, one thing, one thing I want to say. So uh, the interview is unfortunately coming to an end very, very soon. Yes. But uh, so. What are your next steps uh, in the forward? What are your next plans? Are you going to have this kind of a new project uh, with same kind of uh, uh, established uh, video or uh, uh, like like the Ice Queen was? Are, are you going to do that or something else in the future? What are your plans? I think uh, I believe that we have plans to finally record an album on a grand on a um, giant we, we, piano. We, we just in berlin one of our soundcloud friends david clavins mm. he right. is the builder of the giant piano one of them I is in berlin yeah yeah nice nice one. yeah uh, so we, we, may, we may, may get the chance i don't know like it's, it's kind, still kind of prelim, preliminary talking uh yeah but uh, we've got other plans so milan is performing in the berlin uh, philharmonic hall uh in october oh really what kind of music yep. are you performing? Uh, it's we just learned that, that uh, Milano won this opportunity like two days ago, one day, uh, two days ago. Yes, so we don't have the details about what is the format. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's overwhelming. This is an enlightened piano radio. There is a radio so they, like they, that they, that chooses winners of different categories or nominees for the winner. I'm still nominee. I'm not the winner, but I'm on the top three of best piano solo albums. That's nice. Yeah. I, I wish on that. for the, the big great. So yeah. They have a big community. So each each year, I believe, yeah, they do like this annually. award ceremony at different places in the world. This year in October, it's going to be in Berlin. So I was invited oh. because I'm in the top three. I don't know if I'm a winner yet, but I might be. I don't know. Let anyway, I'm invited that's, to that's a pretty nice there. opportunity. So, so you, it have, is. you have a, you have a, you know, the, the, the op, you have um, new opportunities opening up, and we wish all the best for this kind of. Uh, these kind of opportunities you have at the moment. But uh, yes. I think the story of uh, the, your Milana is a great inspiration for composers, especially ones which, uh, which have a, a very big focus on their family. They want to have a family, people, uh, children, and they, they might be in the brink of stopping what they love in, uh, in the process. But it's, it's a great inspiration to have an interview with, uh, um, with, with, with an artist like you, you who has not forgotten her passion and is going forward. But uh, in every interview we have at Intrigue Music, in the final words, we have that uh, every artist who we interview can have you know, some kind of a message for people who are watching. We would like to hear what kind of message you would like to pass on the composers, the artists who are listening this and thinking my, what might uh, be the next step of my artistic career. What would be your last words for this interview? 
last words it sounds ominous. Like, <laughs> no, not in that kind of way, but some kind of yeah. a <laughs> word. I would like to say this short one as a mantra right now. Yes. Uh, do what you love and love what you do. All right. And that is short, but it's very deep. It has layers, so... It, Decide it, it, on your food, deep, what layers I, you take. I, I, I think it's very deep and good message for people. And I think we could actually end on that note. But bef <laughs> not before actually showing and telling the audience who are watching at the moment. Uh, guys and people, there's a lot for Milana. Milan has uh, done a lot of music. He, he, she has a YouTube channel, her own website. Um, I think the website, uh, uh, it's um, www.milana.ws. I think you can find everything you want to learn about her. Listen her music in Spotify, SoundCloud, everything on that. Let me show that on the screen right now. Uh, and uh, let me repeat, uh, www.milana.v as a really good stuff. And of course, her YouTube, uh, YouTube slash uh, Milana Zilnik. I think you will find a good time if you go there. It was an honor, Milana and Artyom, to have you today here uh, to be interviewed. I thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching the interview. More interviews will be in the future, so remember to subscribe. Want to be more part of our community? Click the links below to find out more. Want to hear more from Milana? Click the link to her YouTube video New Beginnings on the screen. As always, intriguing music, sharing your sounds.